Hi, I'm Jeff Notkin, and I'm here today to tell you about my third book, my most favorite book, and it is called My Incredibly Strange and Amazing Real Life Adventures in the World of Comic Books. So before I was known to the world as one of the hosts of Meteorite Men and a producer of STEM journals and other shows and a meteorite specialist, I was a cartoonist and comic books have been my great love. I, I fell hard for comic books when I was about five years old. I went to art school in New York City during the 80s and I worked as a cartoonist during the so-called Bronze Age of comics. So I am going to take you on a little journey through my little known history as a cartoonist and show you how this was done. Ink, white paint, white out, black ink. Uh, these little, I would use these little, uh, little teeny knives. Look at this clever thing, it's like a mini switchblade. To, to clean up, you can see here some, some of the white out around that kid's face and there's a lot here. So it's very tactile, there's, there's a lot of of, uh, of painting and, and digging and scratching and repair work that goes on. It's a bit like refinishing the, the bodywork of a car. And, and look at this note here. This says 64% written in blue pencil that would be invisible to the Photostat camera. And the Photostat camera is a bit like a giant black and white camera that we would use to make an archival copy of this. Because this will fall apart over time. You can see the tape's yellowed, some little things and bits have been chipped. So in order to preserve these and to get them to the right size for publication, we would make an archival copy on the Photostat machine. And that's what this is. So this is, in essence, a, a, a very detailed, glossy, line art photograph of my original. And this is what we would use for publication. So this is my original, my work copy, then photograph down, to the stack copy or the print copy that would go to the printer and this is what they would use to make the plate that would run to print the actual magazine. So there you have it, some of the laborious steps, delightfully laborious steps that we used to go through. It was with great passion and love that I did all of this. And here in this massive tome is the archive of my work from those years, and look at this, it says, G. Notkin, P.O. Box 0003, Hoboken, New Jersey. That's where my studio was in the old days. And it says number two of two. I don't know what happened to number one. Eek, the mystery comics. Ah, true incompetence stories. This is a, based on an encounter I had with the bursar at school. Probably the less said about that, the better. That was an illustration for a cover of a science fiction magazine. Ah, uh, The Adventures of Doc Celery. We were supposed to illustrate a really corny joke. And the story is about these two young carrots. They're out for drive in a sports car. And this tomato steps out of the Crying Onion Saloon. I recently saw a bar named the Crying Onion Saloon. I was so amazed because that was something I came up with for my comic strips. It was in a lot of them. So this drunk tomato is walking on, out on the street and then the two carrots in the sports car, oh no, look, they crash into the tomato, sploom and squee. And so the tomato splattered and then Doc Celery comes to the scene and they take the tomato to the hospital. And the one guy is very cool here. Look, he's smoking in the hospital with his wraparound sunglasses. And the other guy is panicking. It's the waiting, they're not knowing, I can't stand it. Pull yourself together, here's the doc. What about it, doc? Will he live? And Doc Celery comes out with the tomato in the wheelchair and he goes, Yes, boys, he will, but I'm afraid he'll be a, a vegetable for the rest of his life. <laughs> Sorry. I still think it's funny 25 years later. Uh, these, are, these are layouts, concepts for strips. I just loved comics madly my whole life starting at about age five. And I went on this unbelievable and accidental journey where some of the greatest comic creators of all time became my friends and colleagues. And I was just lucky. I happened to go to school with Neil Gaiman. We met when we were 10. We became great friends. We went all through school together. We're still friends over four decades later. And I met and worked with 
Will Eisner, creator of The Spirit, Harvey Kurtzman, founder of Mad Magazine, the great Art Spiegelman, Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist, creator of Mouse, I met Terry Gilliam, I met Milton Kniff of Terry and the Pirates. It was as if every great cartoonist just seemed to kind of wander through my life and I can't take any credit for that. I was just very fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. And I so loved the process, the intricate process of making these comic books with these little tools and the precise little deft little uh, works details that I had to create and make that I wanted to do the same thing with the book and so the process of making the book is really the same as making the comics in the same way that this was my this was my work copy this is my original but it's not the thing that saw print this is the one that saw print a smaller version of it this is my work copy this is my kid right here I've been carrying this around with me in my bag all day, every day, for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I had my, my print manager, Guy Ravella, put this together for me, and I've been reading it and working on it and making little changes. And this is not at all how it's gonna look. This is not the cover. <laughs> the cover is completely different. I've added pages. This is a mock-up of the color panel that is gonna be placed by me, by hand, in every one of the 250 copies of the special edition. There'll be a number there, and I'll, I'll sign them here. I was originally gonna hand number them here, and then I thought, no, 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 we need to have this color panel. And this is really an homage to, to Raw Magazine and Art Spiegelman and Francoise Mouly Spiegelman. This was, this was what they did for Raw Number One, which is a black and white, large format comic book, beautiful, amazing, avant-garde comics magazine, stunned the world. And to keep costs down, they printed it black and white, and then they placed the color panel on the front cover of each piece. And I thought, that is brilliant. So I, I took their idea uh, with love and respect because I worked for them and I learned from them. And I, I wouldn't have this book if it wasn't for them and all the other great cartoonists that I worked with. So this, look, it's falling apart. I've, I've, I've used it so much. Oh, this is one of my favorite pieces. This is the Naughty Jackal, one of my cartoon characters. And I, I became so enamored of the Naughty Jackal that I made a flag <laughs> out of him. And I took that with me to Burning Man several years and the Naughty Jackal flag actually flew over my camp at Burning Man. That's comic characters coming to life. So this is how the interior is gonna be with uh, all the, once everything's been fixed. And this is, a, this is a caricature of me by Lucas Turnblum, famous cartoonist and fellow bass player. So here I am with my pen, metal detector, and my bass guitar and my field gear. And there's a nice little thing here, this, this panel, Oi, Notkin, what? That is from Under Heavy Manners, the strip that we were looking at here. It's, it's this panel here. So rather than just reprint the comic strips that I did, I, I didn't want to do that. That's, that's not the point. I wanted to tell my story of my love affair with comics and comic book publishing and illustrate that story with some of the best illustrations. And speaking of the best illustrations, the portraits of the great cartoonists were done by Roman Casillas, fantastic Tucson artist. And I approached him to do these illustrations and to do the cover. And this was the idea of my friend and colleague, Beth, who's been working with me on the book since the beginning. And I, I really wanted somebody else to do the cover. I didn't want to do the cover. I've done the cover for my other books. I wanted someone else's vision interpretation of me and my characters. So this was meant to be me. This is me in my 20s, with my cool leather jacket. And I was surrounded by my, some of my favorite comic book characters, Battle Axe, the Ring Commander, and Undercat. And I gave this illustration to my artist, Roman Casillas, and said, I, I wanna do a variant on this idea where it's me as a little boy, and I'm surrounded by the characters. And this is what he came up with. There it is. So here are these two characters, and me as a little boy, and the Naughty Jackal. Apparently. 
And here are Roman's other amazing illustrations. Neil Gaiman, my lifelong friend. Oh, here's... There, there's... That's Roman's original concept for the cover. That's really cool. Might have to put that on eBay. Here's the lettering. Here's Art Spiegelman, Will Eisner, Harvey Kurtzman. The titans of comics, as I like to call them. I went way back into my childhood to the very first comic that I read, and I I tried, I think I succeeded in, in capturing the, the wonder and amazement and joy and fascination that I felt and still feel about comic books. And I put all of that into this, into my story. So it's not a history of comic books. It is an exploration of my love of comic books and my extremely weird adventures in the field. My incredibly strange and amazing real life adventures in the world of comic books. You will not believe it, but I promise you everything in this book is true.